Welcome to Make Something With Me, David Petrudo. Today, I'm gonna to show you 10 ways to reinforce miter joints and picture frames. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. We are gonna talk about 10 ways to reinforce miter joints, particularly in picture frames. Some you do before the glue up and some you do after the glue up. Let's talk about if you even need to reinforce these joints. We have 45 degree angles. It's mostly end grain and the end grain works like a straw and just soaks up the glue. One way to strengthen a glue only miter joint is to put glue on there, let it dry and then put more glue on there and glue them together. That way the end grain doesn't soak up all of the glue in the drying process. This has no reinforcement. This might last years and years. The wood is going to expand and contract. All four pieces are going to expand and contract together. So this might last a long time. As that wood expands and contracts, it might loosen that joint and it might finally break apart. That could be years down the road. It could be never. If you're building picture frames for yourself and you know you don't need it to last a lifetime, you might not even need to reinforce those joints. If you are building picture frames that you want to last a lifetime or that you are selling or giving away to somebody else, I would definitely reinforce those joints. Now, if I drop this, it might break. It might not, it might be strong enough. I'm gonna show you at the end of the video if that broke or not. We're gonna go over 10 ways to reinforce this. Some of them are quick and dirty and some of them are a little bit more involved. I'm saving my favorite and the strongest for last. That is the mitered spline with the jig. We're gonna make the jig at the end of the video. So let's get started with those first nine. Probably the most simple is just a hammer and a nail. Not the best solution, but it's the easiest solution. Also, you could break apart your frame while doing this. So you have to be really careful. I'm a little worried myself. And then you would come in from the other side and do the same. And there we go. We got a nail on each side going in there and you can, you can somewhat see it, but for the most part, it's hidden. If you're worried about the wood splitting, pre-drill that hole. Number two, and this is same thing, but a lot easier with a 18 gauge brad nailer. So once again, just gonna throw this in here. Again, you can see the hole in there. If you're gonna go the easy route, it's not gonna be perfect. Number three, and probably my least favorite, is with a biscuit joiner after the glue up. Typically, a biscuit joiner cuts a little, a little slot, and then you can put a biscuit in there and glue those together. That's a teaser for later. But we're gonna do it on the outside, so I have my frame clamped down to the bench, and I'm gonna come in at a 45 degree angle, and I'm gonna cut a little slot in there. For the spline, I'm gonna use a contrasting piece of maple, and we're gonna take this over to the table saw and sneak up on the perfect fit. I don't want to cut all the way through just because it's going to cut through my push stick. This, this is all I need right here. Don't worry about the burning. It'll be covered up. Mark our line. Cut that out with a handsaw or a band. So now we'll just add a little bit of glue and you let that sit and dry and we'll come back with a flush trim saw and cut that off. Or, So this next one, we're gonna do at the router table with a 1 8 inch slot cutter. This shank has a removable blade and you can put different sizes on there. I've got a 1 8 inch blade on there and it should be the same size as the biscuit joiner. 
and the table saw blade. I am going to use this miter gauge that I have set up here. If your router table does not have a miter gauge, you cut a 45 on a board and you want to get the same thickness as your frame. And then you can take this with a, with a paddle and run that through. Have I mentioned this is my least favorite method? If you have any gaps, like that one is absolutely perfect. But if you, sometimes you might get a little chip out if you have any gaps. That is not Nestle's Quick, that is actually walnut sawdust that I keep on hand. And just use a little bit of CA glue and then a little bit of that. Rub it in. Look at that. No gaps, you can't even see that. Some people use wood glue. I like using CA glue just because it dries so fast and you get instant satisfaction. This method also uses a spline, but we're gonna do it before glue up and we're gonna run a spline on the inside of this joint. We're gonna do it here at the table saw. I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. The safest way is with a spline jig like I have here that runs along your fence. I'm gonna show you how to make it at the end of the video. And then I'm gonna show you the not as safe way, but if you're comfortable with it, way. So, I've got my blade set to half inch high, and I'm gonna run a groove right down the middle here. Oh, also, this is my least favorite method. This method, not quite as safe, not nearly as safe, but if your piece is wide enough and you have enough flat surface, you can just set this up against the table saw table and then run this through and we should be fine. And again, we cut splines out, cut a little on the end there at the bandsaw, and we'll just glue this in. And then this one, basically the same at the table saw, except once again, we're using the slot cutter here at the router. This next one, probably one of my least favorites, but it's one of the easier ones. I've got a Forstner bit in my drill, and I'm gonna do one of these numbers on a glued up frame. I wanna go down one eighth of an inch, which is the thickness of some plywood. This is a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit. So now we're gonna draw one and a quarter inch circles on here and cut this out over at the bandsaw. Now, of course, if you have a CNC or a laser cutter, you could be really precise with those circles and you could batch out a bunch all at one time and then always have that at your disposal in the future. Uh, this is the back. So, you know, my fit's not perfect, but that's fine because typically this gets covered up with paper anyway. If you put a dust cover on there, you, nobody will ever see this. If it's hanging on the wall, no one's ever gonna see this. So that's a quick and dirty way. And that's plywood, so that's nice and stable. Number eight, which is probably my least favorite method, is the biscuit joiner before glue up. And then that is gonna go in there like so. And that is gonna go in there like so. Biscuit. Number nine is the Domino, and that uses the Bestool Domino Joiner. It's like the biscuit joiner, except it uses these little wooden tenons, not the biscuits. The cool thing about the Domino is it's super expensive. 
Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't cut a huge slot like the biscuit joiner. It cuts a small slot like this. For the biscuit joiner, you have to have a picture frame that's at least two inches wide. The domino, you can have narrower picture frames. Now we're using my frame clamping jig. I've got a video on this really cool, clever jig. It's been around for decades. So that came out really good. Now it is time for my favorite one, which is the mitered spline. And that takes a special jig that rides along our table saw fence. So let's go make that jig. For this jig, it's gonna to go together pretty darn quick. It's pretty simple and it doesn't need to be crazy precise. So we need to make two pieces that are the height of the fence that's gonna wrap around the fence. So I've got my, what do you call this, Dan? So now that we have the two side pieces that are gonna turn the fence into a sandwich, we need to make one more piece. That's the sum of this. We're gonna clamp these guys to the fence, lightly clamp to the fence, and uh, we can just glue and screw this onto there. So I got that glue on there, I got them pre-drilled. You just wanna make sure that this doesn't stick out at all this way when you screw this down, because that's gonna interfere with the bore that we're gonna put on over here. And if it does slip out, we can sand that off. Ain't no thing. Always get the screw started first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That's pretty good. I'm retired. Now that that slides along there and you got no, no wiggle, we're going to attach another board that's going to go on right here and we're just going to glue and screw it just like before and you do want to make sure that it's square it should be if you're using plywood so now we need to cut two little runners that's going to hold the picture frame in place on the one end of each piece i'm going to cut a 45 on here not 100 percent necessary woodworkers love overkill So I know when I want my frame in the jig, I want the tip of it, just the tip, to kiss, just the tip, kissing the top of the, I am, whew, it's getting hot in here. <laughs> uh, I know that I want the tip to just kiss the top of the table. So that's gonna go in there like that. This piece is gonna go in here like that. This piece is gonna go in here like this. And I know that I do want these pieces to be up a little bit and out of the way of the blade. So it's gonna go in there like so. A speed square is gonna come in handy for this. So I'm gonna throw my speed square on the edge there. I've got a line right here where I want this to come down to and I can line both of those up. But I also need to bring in a frame in here so I can kind of figure out where everything is gonna go. I'm gonna draw a line right there. And now when I glue and screw this in, I can just kind of line it up with that line using CA glue because it dries really fast. Some activator on there so it dries even faster. And now I can use this as a guide over here. Double check, make sure that tip comes right down. Yep, all good. So. Once that dries nice and good, double check everything. Perfect, perfect, and perfect. So I'm just gonna take a flush trim saw. One of the things that really annoyed me about my old spline jig was 
getting one of these clamps up here and screwing it down every single time and then running this through. So this time I've got one of these self adjustable, self adjusting toggle clamps that's going to go in the middle here. So that goes on there like so. I could toggle that down. Now you don't want the really big one because it's going to get in the way of smaller frames like this. But this one opens up like that. You throw that in there, toggle that down, and then we can run this through. I think we have one more picture frame we can run through here. Once you get your frame on there, you clamp that down, and then you can just move your fence over to where you want it. I'm gonna put this over there so I can kind of see if you want to go right in the center, you just eyeball it. You set your blade to the right height. I don't want to go that deep. Let's, uh, there we go. How about that? Dan says yes. We didn't use the flat bottom grind blade, but really, you can't even tell. That's 10 ways to reinforce miter joints for picture frames. This is my favorite by far. So I have a video on the making of this picture frame sled. I've got a video on this gluing jig, and then you're watching the video for this. We're gonna turn off the lights, go into spaceship mode, and we're gonna use all three of these jigs to make a frame. While we are in spaceship mode, I would like to tell you about today's sponsor and that is Squarespace. I've talked a lot about how Squarespace makes setting up and updating your site really easy. They've got beautiful templates. Today, I wanna to dive in just a little bit deeper and tell you about how Squarespace helps me and my business succeed. Connected services with Squarespace. So if you've got a Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, you can bring that right into Squarespace to condense your digital life all into one place. And Squarespace also has a variety of extensions to expand your website. I used to ship all of my merch right here out of my house and I use the Squarespace extension for ShipStation to do so to help with printing the labels. These days I use a fulfillment center called Printful which connects directly to Squarespace. All of my orders go right through my website and get sent to Printful. Printful prints and ships all of that merch. Squarespace takes care of all of that behind the scenes and makes my life so much easier. For taking payments, you can connect your Stripe account, your PayPal account, your Apple Pay. For shipping, you can connect UPS, the US Postal Service, FedEx. All of these things can connect to your Squarespace site so you have one hub for your digital life. With Squarespace's connections and extensions, it just makes my life so much easier and helps my business to succeed. So visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Also just go to squarespace.com and look at all the different things that you can connect to your site. It's pretty cool. Thank you Squarespace for allowing me to do these crazy videos, allowing me to be weird. Thank you for watching. Let's get back to these picture frames. Thank you for watching. I have plans for all of these jigs on my website at makesomething.com. We'll see you next week with a brand new project. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. <laughs> all four joints broke. I thought it would just break into two. It broke all four joints. So, um, and I did wipe the glue on there, let it dry, 
and then wipe more glue on there to glue those those up. So uh, yeah, not not very strong. <laughs>